So let's then move to that story. I mentioned that figure, 30,000 parking tickets a day. I mean, ministers, as you remember, did promise to crack down on cowboy operators. So whether these are all legit, I kind of roughly did the maths. It's about 11 million tickets a year for parking your car on the wrong coloured paint or tarmac or somehow not adhering to a timer that gave you a certain limit. These are shocking fillers. Uh, figures revealing ruthless private companies issuing 2.7 million tickets to drivers between just April and June or one every three seconds. It means parking firms are on track to issue demands for up to a billion pounds. I mean, just let that settle for a second. A billion pounds in fines this year. And the figures only apply to car parks run by private firms. That doesn't include councils, so it would be much higher. Ministers last night faced renewed calls to get tougher on pirate firms, causing misery for millions of motorists amid the cost of living crisis and sky-high fuel prices. Have you received a parking ticket from one of those kind of companies? And even when you try to argue this thing, it went on and on and on. It got nasty. Did you end victoriously? Or were you several hundred or even thousands of pounds out of pocket? So I speak with Barry Siegel, founder of ParkingTicketExpert.com and AppealNow.com. How are you doing, Barry? I'm very well, thank you, Ian. Good to see you again. Um, listen, we, we can talk about cowboy clampers and parking firms. I suppose some of these, maybe most of these, whether we like it or not, are actually legit. Well, some are legit, um, but the real problem is that there's no proper oversight or transparency. And, for example, your film actually showed a motorist getting a parking ticket from a local authority parking attendant. Now, in that situation, the appeal process is defined by law, and it's very, very straightforward. When you appeal to a parking ticket company, a private company, you are not really dealing with a legislative issue you're dealing with a company whose only interest is getting your money yeah. local authorities aren't permitted to issue parking tickets to make a profit but all these private companies are actually profit making companies and i've seen some of the accounts and you could run a small country from some of their profits yeah so the the, the big problem initially is the appeal process and the other problem is that when the private company turns you down, you have to appeal to an, an independent tribunal. And I think that the current system of the par private parking tribunals is uh, broken. And I think it needs a totally new system and some other long-term issues which need to be dealt with. Absolutely. What, what is the, the way forward on this? Because this is being, I think you and I first spoke about 20 years ago, Barry, on well, this, this uh, very uh, issue. And here we are in 2022, and it hasn't gone away. No, it hasn't. The only thing that's gone away is my hair. But um, <laughs> the, the, the issue um, for local authorities has got a little better. It's more transparent. Yeah. Um, for private parking companies, not at all. If anything, it's gone worse. The only good thing is the government prevented um, clamping and towing away, so that can't happen. But the issue in terms of members of the public appealing these uh, private parking tickets has got worse. Yep. And you can see the numbers, as you pointed out, one tick private parking ticket every three seconds. This is an extraordinary figure, isn't it? So what's the advice then? I mean, this is, you know, this has been your world for a long time. What is, if you get one of these tickets, um, and you, you, I mean, if you've been parking illegally, then I suppose you have to take it on the chin, right? I mean, the fact that the company has been given the, the license to operate in that area is a, a, an argument between the local authority or the government and the company. But if you've illegally parked, you might have to take it on the chin. If there is a discrepancy, I mean, what's the, the, the broad advice, Barry, on these things in terms of what drivers should do? Well, the main thing is get all your ducks in a row. So take pictures of the signs, take pictures of the road markings, take pictures of where the sign was located, yeah. which is very important. And then put together an appeal. Don't use any rude language or, or all sorts of things that I've seen and lodge the appeal with the parking company. Now, most of your appeals will be turned down and then your alternative is to go to the 
independent tribunals, and there are two you can appeal to, and do the same appeal. Now, whether you'll be successful, I don't know. But the, the important thing is not to just leave it. It's important to appeal straight away yeah. in a, uh, how should I say, in a delicate way. Yeah. And that's the advice. Do it in a delicate way and see where it goes. Barry, thank you. Great to have you on again. Barry Siegel, founder of ParkingTicketExpert.com and AppealNow.com. I would check out both of those sites if you found yourself in this place. I, look, I just say this. Whenever this subject comes up, uh, one of the things you're never meant to talk about on the radio, on programmes like this, are parking tickets and speeding tickets, because everybody's got one, everyone's got a story. We all sniff an injustice and we all think we're the only person and our story is worse than anybody else's. However, let's leap forward from that. There are stories that are just to the north end of unbelievable. When every law of logic, every law of basic decency, every law of appealing to common sense goes out the window and you find yourself up against a system and a system that where there might not even be an individual to speak to automated systems faceless people on emails trying to retell the story to another operative at the parking ticket company for the umpteenth time because you've already explained it to six of their colleagues and it wasn't registered and you've got to start again going through this so i'm talking here not about, we've all had a parking ticket and we've all sometimes chanced our arm and parked somewhere and actually, you know, if you don't get a ticket, fantastic. Uh, if you do get one, you do have to take it on the chin. But what about those stories where it was unequivocal? There was no way you should have got this thing. Everything was around you. All the evidence corroborated your story, your plea for a bit of basic parking justice. But... It fell on utter deaf ears because the faceless bods and bureaucrats and fat cats over there at Parking Ticket HQ, they were having none of it. They weren't going to buy your old flannel juice and gibberish. They were absolutely sure that you owed them 150 quid. And if you didn't pay in 10 days, 300 quid, thank you. Oh, and then we'll double it 10 days after. 600 quid, really? No, we'll double that. What, 1,200? Yep. What next? Then we come around your house and take away your goods. Oh, hang on. You're going to come to my house and take away my jumbo flat screen because I parked on some yellow paint? Because I parked outside the Rosen Crown, which apparently has a policy where you're not allowed to, despite the fact I just had a tasty plowman's lunch inside the very establishment? My punishment for that is to take away my flat screen TV and my iPhone, if I'd have robbed the pub, I wouldn't be punished with that level of severity. I think that's the bit that is irksome in all of this, isn't it? It's not, the, it's not just the concept of the parking ticket barons and the cowboys. These people will always be among us. It's the amount of money involved for what has to be Unless you've parked, you know, on the side of a roundabout, a spaghetti junction. If you've done that, if you decided to, I don't know, drop your car off just on the inside lane of the M25. Yeah, I get that. Tow the car away, crush the darn thing. But in the broader picture of criminality, this must sit so low down the level. And yet the punishment the heady amounts of cash involved in this are so darn high. You hear stories of people who end up because of the constant back and forth and the time delays. That's how they get you, isn't it? If you pay this in 14 days, all of that. And because of that, some people end up with thousands. How? how? Thousands of pounds. All I did was park. It's a parking offence, mate. Why am I being fined more? than if I wrapped a pint glass around someone's head in the aforementioned pub. This is madness.